In the last video, we learned to add this animated GIF inside of our application because we learned that WPF is not a web browser and it does not um, interpret animated GIFs the same way a web browser would interpret an animated GIF. So we have to import some special classes, which is in this package, that helps us easily be able to import animated GIFs and have it uh, animate the way it normally does inside of a web browser. So we learned that the last video. We also added this target A and we added this target B. Oh, I, okay, so I forgot the, that was just target, so I'm gonna name, name that, oh, not A, I need to name this to B. There we go, that's A, that's B. And when I look down here, make sure the names, <laughs> make sure the names are right. So there we go, that's uh, A and B. And as I select this, you see it's being selected up here uh, as I select the name uh, below here. So our next goal now is to actually get some movement in this in this application. To be able to move the mouse around, let me save this and clean that, there we go. To be able to, uh, not necessarily the mouse, but we want to capture the keystroke. We're going to do this with, we want this rocket ship. Here's another thing I need to change. Right now I have this called ship from the last video. We don't want that. We want this to be called um, fireball. And I'll, maybe you changed it earlier. So I changed it here, and as you can see, it changes here. So we want our fireball to be able to move, the ra move around. Uh, using the the uh, the arrow keys, so the up, the left, and the right, right. So it's going to be in continuous movement. But if we move, if we use the left key, it's going to go up, and if we use the right key, it'll go down, and if we use the up key, it'll go, it it'll go straight. So if I hit the right key, it'll just keep going right in a circle, and if I hit the left key, it'll keep going left in a circle until I hit the up key, which then wherever I hit it, it's just going to keep on going in that direction. That's going to involve a little bit of trigonometry and a little bit of um, just a little bit of trigonometry, a little bit of math. Uh, but don't worry, it's not going to be too much for you not to be able to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down over here into my main window, into the main window XAML.VB. I'm going to double click that to get in the code behind. Now, in order for us to capture the uh, the keystrokes we need to be able to add an event handler for the keys all the keys as a matter of fact so I'm gonna do that by first starting off with a with the constructor and let the VB write the rest of that I'm gonna delete this because it's just extra space I already know all that so I go ahead now and I'm gonna add an event handler for the key down event so I'm gonna say um, add event uh, at event handler. Let me do this right. Add handler, sorry. Add event handler. Add handler. And then I'm not typing right because I have some tape on my hand. I have an injury. So you gotta forgive me for that. And I'm gonna say me, meaning this object, which is the application. Uh, key down. And then I'm gonna say address of Let's call that key down handler. That's good enough. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to get an error here because I don't have a key down handler function. And we should already know that I like to do it this way to have it generate it for me because it makes it so much easier than typing it, especially when you have an injury. So there you go. All right. So um, every time I press a key down, I'm going to get this here. So let's just do a quick test. I'm going to go console dot right line. Oops. And I'm just going to do a test. So let's just say key pressed. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and run that. And I I press a key and every time I press a key, if you look down here, it's saying key pressed. But we don't want any key to be pressed. We want to know when a specific keys are pressed specifically speaking about the up the the left the up and the right key so uh, that test worked which is really good I like testing in between to make sure I'm on the right track and my thought processes is in in order you know in regards to uh, what I'm trying to achieve um, so the object I'm looking for is actually 
in this key event arguments and right now it's addressed as E so really if I were to go ahead uh, I'm gonna write console console dot right line again um, no I'm gonna say I'm gonna do this I'm gonna say if E dot key E dot key let's say equals key left okay so if it equals if e dot key equals key left we're gonna console dot right line and then we're going to say left key Pressed. This is just a test. We just want to make sure again. See, I'm added. I'm doing these additive tests. So this definitely should work because the last test that I did worked. Um, and if it doesn't, you can sue me. All right. So not really. You can't sue me. Actually, you can't. It's illegal. So I'm going to hit my left mouse. There it is. I'm hit my left mouse button, and there it is. Let me hit the up mouse button. See what happens. Nope. Let me hit some other mouse button. I'm sorry. The left key and the up key. Nothing happens on the up, nothing happens on the right, but only when I hit the left key it works. I'm gonna hit all these other keys just to do my test and nothing else happens. So that's great. So I go ahead and um, close that down and I'm gonna keep this here. So now I know that this works, but I don't want to be going through all the keys and if statements. That's just not going to cut it. So what I'd rather do is I'd rather use a select case here. So I'm going to say select case. And go E dot key. And I'm going to close that case there. And I'm going to say if case is key left. Um, do something and I'm going to say case is key right do something and then case is key I want you to do something. Now in between this is where we're going to put all of our stuff. Now we're going to be we're going to be using the key press. We're going to be using this data throughout our application. So what I'd like to do actually I'd like to put this information inside of a a variable. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna dim a variable. Uh, I'm gonna call this. Um, I'll call that current key. Yeah, I call it current key press. No, current key is fine. I'll say that as string. There we go. Mm, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and start it off as nothing in there. So. Now what I want is I want to be able to go ahead and put the result of this inside of that that string. I'm going to here and I'm going to say current key equals I'm going to copy this. Put it down here, put that down there. All right? And up, uh, and we can test this. So um, I have my select case here. I have the end of my sub here. So after after the end of this um, this select, I'm gonna go ahead and do another console dot write, and then I'm going to say current key. And I can go ahead and run that. And now I can test. That's the left, up. Good. We can see it right here. I have my left, up, and right. So we're capturing 
the key codes now. So now we can move on from there. Now that we can capture all this stuff and we know what's being clicked and we know it, we know what's being pressed. We only we're only focused on three keys. So we know that things are being pressed, but we're not really we're ignoring everything else except for these three keys, and we're storing it into this variable here. So we got that. Now in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start. We're going to actually take this these uh, this information here and we're going to add it to the movement of our fireball and be able to move our fireball around.